Roy Teeter. I am with Performance Engineering and Manufacturing. I am a co-owner and production manager. Today, what we're going to do is we are going to install a Eaton True Track into an existing 9-inch center section. Whenever I have an existing center section that's already been set up, uh, I always do two things. I do an initial inspection, uh, a visual. Uh, I spin it around. I mechanically feel for everything. Uh, if there's any catches, uh, if you feel um, any any um, thing in the bearings that might be a problem, uh, I make a middle note of it. Uh, the second thing that I do uh, is we actually check to see. This gear has never actually been run. It's been set up, but it's never been run on the street or in the car or the track. But whenever you have a used gear, one of the things that you really have to watch out for is to put the backlash exactly where it was whenever you got it. Um, that gear has been set in, the gears are lapped into themselves, and if you move the backlash around, if you move the pinion depth around, the pattern is not going to be the same. So I've already done this just for uh, myself before we started this, but take a magnetic base indicator, put it on the gear, you rock it back and forth, and you can see what the existing backlash is. This one is set up a little bit tight. It's about five thousandths. That's a little tight for uh, even drag racing. Drag racing will generally be about eight thousandths. Um, a lot of times people set them up a little bit tighter knowing that they're going to wear in a few thousandths. Um, this is going to go on the street, so we're going to put the backlash at about eleven and twelve thousandths whenever we put this back in. So now that we did that, I do make a note of that. I am going to change it so I don't necessarily need to remember that. But we're going to go ahead and do a teardown on this. Uh, depending on the ratio, you can take these things apart in different fashions. Uh, if you're disassembling it, you're taking it apart so it doesn't really matter what order you do it. A lot of times, <clears throat> if you have a, a deeper ratio, I would say anything past the mid fours, uh, you know, 486, we build all the way up to 733 for circle track. Uh, you actually have to move the ring gear over before you can pull the pinion out. This is what ratio? Yeah, I believe that's a 370. 370, so that's a fairly high ratio. I should be able to pull this pinion out without moving this over. So that should be the easier thing to do, so that's what I'll do now. One of the things we do in this shop, we always have magnetic bases. Um, for two reasons, it doesn't roll off the bench. Uh, the second reason, if there's anything left in your bowl when you're done, you probably forgot to put something in. <laughs> I'm gonna put one nut back on it just in case it wants to fall to the ground. Go ahead and break the spanner locks loose. And then we'll take the cap bolts out, relieve a little bit of the carrier bearing preload. That'll make it easier for the cap to come off. On the caps, before I pull them apart, uh, these are already marked, but you always want to make sure that if you do a OE disassembly, the caps are not marked left and right. They have to go back in the same position that they came off in. Um, it can be as simple as making a mark on your case. A lot of times we use two tick marks, one tick mark. Uh, whenever we do large disassemblies in the shop, uh, we come through with the center punch and we mark the caps before we ever touch anything else so that we know those caps will go back on there. You can't take a cap for one case and put it on another case. Uh, you can't switch the caps. easy. Sometimes the expanders will come off with them. If they do, great. If not, you can 
take them off. Spanners can go from side to side. I tend to try to keep them with the original caps. Uh, and then you can lift out the carrier. Turn it over. Give this a little tug. There is an O-ring in it, so sometimes it'll take a little bit. Uh, to get it out, sometimes uh, people will silicone them. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, if you are having a problem uh, and it's leaking around your pinion, uh, I would say don't silicone it. I would say replace the O-ring because that's usually the problem. Uh, the OE stuff, the older stuff, uh, with time they get really dry, brittle, they crack. Uh, for a while they used a D-shaped O-ring. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I always replace the O-rings on anything that I do. O-rings and seals, pretty simple, pretty cheap. Um, it's good insurance. Uh, you always want to keep the pinion depth shim uh, originally with what was in it. I'll sit it there. Do another quick inspection. Uh, some problem areas uh, on the Ford 9 inch. Uh, on all the OE stuff, this area right here, this is an aftermarket case, it's built up, it's really heavy. But on the OE uh, cap applications, they tend to crack across here if they've had any kind of shock load. If they've, um, in the circle track world, which is what we do a lot of, they tend to hit each other, they tend to hit the wall, uh, and that's what gives a lot. And then the gear side carrier cap on the stock applications, they crack quite a bit too. So um, in the aftermarket world, uh, the caps are not cast. They're a forged steel, uh, and that's one of the biggest improvements that anybody can do to an aftermarket case. So now that we have it disassembled, we'll have to come over here, and we're going to remove. We're going to remove the gear from the carrier. I tend to use a, a brass hammer as a drift. Um, it gives me a handle to hang on to, and then uh, it doesn't mark the gear up, mm -hmm. and then I tap on it with a ball pin. There it is. Now that I have it off, I'll go ahead and just do a quick inspection. Back of it looks pretty good. Uh, what I like to do is squirt a little bit of alcohol on it just to cut the grease. And we'll come through and dust the back of it with a stone just to check for any nicks or high spots that may cause run out problems on the gear later. Everything looks pretty good here. Uh, there's a couple high spots, but uh, I haven't seen one that didn't have a couple high spots on it, so don't have any problem with that. I'm going to set it to the side for now. So now we're going to remove the bearings. This is a uh, commonly called a clamshell puller. It's, uh, it's a pretty nice handy piece if you do work like this quite a bit. Uh, just like any other tool, if you don't do this kind of work, it's probably not that useful. Uh, this is a product that we, we sell. When you set the puller up, you need to have the race that goes with it set on top of it. It doesn't have to be the actual race you're using. It could be a junk one. Come in with the clamshell portion. Do a little bit of adjustment to take some of the slop out of it. There's a retainer that goes on the outside of it. That holds everything together. bit of tension on it. I use a stub axle to hold the other side.
when you pull it back apart, the bearing comes out as assembly. It doesn't get uh, damaged. You don't have to beat on it. A lot of times, uh, the problems that arise whenever people want to reuse bearings, it's because they're damaged <clears throat> when they switch them from one carrier to another. Um, again, they're, they're really not that expensive uh, compared to getting something together and have to pull it back apart completely because you have a, a rear end that's making a bearing noise. With a lot of the local service that we do here in the shop, we, uh, we would rather do the service time and time again on different projects, we really don't want to do the same service time and time again on the same project. So we try to recommend simple things, bearing changes, seals, o-rings, uh, any of the small stuff that's going to uh, make a big difference. Tools up, that's always optional in the shop. Now, since we recovered our bearings, we can install them on the new carrier after we install the gear. 